To me, it represents the whole world, you know, and we got a skull there that represents humanity. We got the spears and the arrows that represents that we all come from some kind of tribe or another. All four quarters of the world, you know, your ancestors, you know, were from some kind of tribe. Everybody lived a primitive life at once and everybody was tribe, you know what I mean? And we all knew the same language. And uh, we put the weed leaf on, the, on there too because we believe that, you know, cannabis hemp could do a lot of good for as far as environmental purposes and medicinal uses and, and stuff like that. And, and it's proven fact that it does. And not only that, if you notice anybody who's involved well, with... what up, y'all? So I don't know. Anybody who's involved with the pro-cannabis movement, it goes beyond color, you know, so it, it, in a way it kind of brings people together. <laughs> I've always had white friends and, and Hispanic friends and stuff, so, you know, to me it doesn't matter what you are, we're all human, you know, we could all cool out together, and that's what the neighborhood's all about. You know, it's not some kind of statement, statement that we make, it's just these other people we've grown up with, and, you know, we're, we're all down together like a family. Were, were your family supportive of you, or are they now, of, of your choice of careers? Well, my family has always been into music far back to my great-great-grandfathers and grandmothers. They've always been singers or musicians of some kind or another. Your brother? Down to my brother and myself, you know, my mom and dad. Uh, music has always just been there. You know, I just didn't know what kind of music to fall into, you know, so I, rap was the first thing I ever tried. I don't play no instruments, but, you know, I like doing vocals, you know what I'm saying? And my family, even though they don't know what Cypress Hill is about, they know that we're a successful group, and that makes them happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mother, she knew about it, but I, I, I kept it under wraps through all my family because basically they didn't care to know me before, so now they're all coming out the woodwork. So I'm like, ah, you know, hey, whatever. But it's like, they, you know, my real family knows who they are. Even though we're, you know, you have, you have people that are related to you, but they're not family if they don't treat you like it. And that's, you know, I'm like, yeah, go back to the woodwork. Yeah, you know, he toured around the world off his album, you know, and um, he recently just finished his new album and he just shot his video. And all this stuff's going to be dropping like next month. And, uh, you know, he's cool, and he's got some nice songs on there. Um, funky in the Joint, uh, uh, Funky Muñeca. You know him, he's on the bilingual tip, real heavy, so. Yeah. He kind of was one of the first rappers to introduce the whole Latino edge of things. He was the first rapper to come across big that the whole world recognized. Because when I first got into hip-hop, it was a lot of black and Puerto Rican kids. But as soon as they made it, it's like, you never seen the Latino kids. All you saw was the black kids. And uh, I was wondering, well, what happened to, you know, Ruby D and, and all them guys, you know? And uh, Melo, you know, he just, his record was the first to, like, let people know that it's now more than just the blacks doing rap. You know what I'm saying? The Latino kids are good at it. The white boys are good at it. If that's the first to cross over at that, yeah. you know, yeah. to, to the mainstream and, and get, the, get the general public hip on, on the bilingual swing, you know? Yeah. He, had, he had a very big record, real big record. And did that filter through to you guys as well, with your, that influence no, being there? No, that's totally different than what we, where we're coming from. I mean, we're all from the same school, mm -hmm. and, you know, he, he taught Mello his bilingual skills, but as far as Mello's thing, you know, it, that's Mello's thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, Mello, he's, you know, he's Mello, you know, he's going to stay where he is, mm -hmm. you know? Us, uh, I kind of could say that when, when Melo's record came out, me and him were already doing demos. Mm -hmm. So we already were focused on what we wanted to right. do, you know. And Melo was a part of our original group called DVX, that was us two and him. And he wanted to go solo, then it was like, you know, go solo then, it's cool. You know, we're going to go for ours, you know. And Cypress Hill, you know, we've been doing, we were doing demos for three years before a record company said, hey, that sounds good. Well, let's 
Sally Cat puffin' on a hootie man Stop think I'm a criminal for show You ain't all of that Hit you with the baseball bat When you wanna L so you wanna f*** around You get fucked on the hill, bro Kick you with the steel toe Real slow hit from the bong Make me feel like teaching them Kicking it with chum Just like Cheech and Chum Frottin' with ice cream Cypress Hill is here to give you a nice dream Speaking like a roller So you know it's real tightly I'm, I'm like, like the funky me So why you trying to fight me? Text wanna cite me That's not polite, G Mugs had worked with uh, Joe the Butcher earlier in a 783 project and um, they were friends and they knew each other. And when we were shopping our demos, we let Joe and Chris hear him, Chris Schwartz. They liked him, but not enough to sign us. You know, they thought we needed more. So they offered us a single deal and we said, nope. <laughs> Here we are starving for a deal and we're telling them no. But later on they came with the album deal and we came with a proper album and everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. At what point did uh, labels start chasing after you guys? They never did. No. They ne I like to say that a lot of labels slept on us. You know, yeah. didn't think that um, my man B Real's vocal delivery was, you know, on the cutting edge that it could really get across. Or they maybe they didn't think that we were talking enough substance in our songs to get across. But yeah. I, I think us three right here, we always had the faith that we could do something with our nucleus. It's a lot of A and R people that can't yeah. relate to yeah, we, where we, we come from. That you know? We don't need those record labels with the silly rabbits on them. Uh, you know, down with us, you know? My records are all in storage, though. I got about five records at the house. For real? <laughs> yeah. So what are those five records? Uh, some old hip-hop, some Ram LZ. I think I got a Jimi Hendrix album laying in there somewhere. Cypress Hill album, Public yeah. Enemy album. So the, most of the tapes we bring on the road are rock and roll tapes. That's all we listen to. It's old classic Black rock. Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Hendrix. A lot of reggae. You know, we, Oldies. I'll tell you what, we listen to more of that than we do hip-hop on the road. <laughs> Because we hear it enough at home and in the studio. And we're waiting for certain people's albums to come out now. Yeah. For EPMD to drop, Pete Rock, CL Smooth. I need some to listen to. Come on, man. <laughs> Funky Awareness is, is trying to get everybody aware on what's going on in the streets and what's going on in parts of the world. But you, you're doing it funky, you know. I think some artists have, have lost their funkiness to them and they worry too much on delivering the message, whatever it is they're saying. They, you start thinking too much about the message, you lose a little bit of yeah. the music. The number yeah. one, oh, excuse me, go ahead. Cool. And first things first, you gotta have, your music's gotta be heard so that people say, oh, you know, Cypress Hill's dope, listen to their track. You know, the music first and then what we're saying is gonna come along. And I say, oh, those two brothers rapping are dope, you know. So you gotta hit them first with the funky, you know, and then the awareness part. Don't matter who it is, it could be anybody. If they ain't got beats, nobody wants to listen to them. Indeed. I mean, cause you, you have years of, of, of rappers shoving, shoving things down your throat all the time. They're still doing it. And they're still doing it. And now the whole problem is that the beats ain't as good as they were when they first started. Yeah. So we try to, we, we, we put the intensity behind it, but we put a little humor to break that so it'll ease it down and say, oh, yeah, man, I could relate to that. That was funny, because that happened to me, you know? It's like nobody wants to hear, oh, I killed a nigga, chopped his head off, threw it down the toilet and flushed it, you know? All because yeah, I do. wanted money and you I had to, to sell that too. drugs. It's in the ghetto boys. Everybody sold a million records. You know, I mean, people, for the people who like that, that's, you know, that's them. You know, that's, I guess, that's their way. But, you know, we try to put you know, reality with humor because, you know, when it worst comes to worst, when something bad happens to you and you think about it years later, you laugh and say, I can't believe that happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's what we want to make people think. I can't believe I did that. What made me do that? Kick it! Just get on up! Come on! Just get on up! Come on! Come on! Kick it! Just get on up! Yeah! Just get on up! Yeah! Well, it's Alley Cat, some say it's Dirty Rat, on my side is my cat. 
see him all that. Spitting out fuck stuff, but I'm gonna watch the front and hide. But I'm still coming to get ya. Thinking like a peace mouth coming on a homicide. You talk <laughs> Trying to take me for a ride. I'm not a bad guy, but I'm the, the fuck they did. Finger on the trigger when my hands upon the steel. Letting out a bullet. It's just going boo ya. Stuck in my hood, so what you gonna do now? Being in the hunt, it was no fun. Here it comes, son, yo, I think you better run Better run more and move a little faster Second up, uh, and I'm coming to blast your Check it, start a shotgun Hand on the pump, left and on the 40 Hoof it on the blood, fuck my shotgun The nigga got a jump What's up for your mind, you want to like this? What's going on in there? Really nothing. I don't know why the guy that did the video tried to give it a storyline when it's a freestyle round to begin with. Yeah, that, that was some old record company he, business. The kid was like, the kid that did the video was like, he just didn't want to do a freestyle video. We wanted to do it all in the alley with the trash can burning the 40 ounces going and uh, just rhyming and like... the funny you know, effects, you know, like yeah. the, when but we switch in places. He, this guy, he came in with this old Academy Award idea of his. With a hookup, yeah. and we, police. I we did it all, I mean, and that's it. He know? was good, I mean, he's, he's real good. Great I mean, work. Great work. The video looks good, but the storyline wasn't about... I mean, I put just a little fraction of a message in there and he tried to put it he tried to incorporate it more than it really was because mm -hmm. i said something about a a, 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 hooker. a pimp a hooker and a stay off the crack mm -hmm. thing right and that was only like a little piece of the song yeah. and, but yet he incorporated a hooker uh, a pimp and another girl a cop and and some pigs and i'm like yo in a way it's kind of cool man people were trying to figure out that video you keep trying to figure it out it ain't about nothing well you know well saying? when people say what's the message in the in the pimp dead right stay off the crack stay off the crack and leave the hookers alone <laughs> that's the message i'll be saying lay off the crack and leave the hookers alone okay. that's our message in that song other than a good time to all the yeah. funk stuff, like the Zaps and Rogers and, you know, all of that, you know, craft work. So I think being funk, the funk, L.A. is like a, a funk-oriented town, you know? Yeah. And then you got your, your little, not, I, I call them bass heads, but they're not, you know, crack addicts. They're the ones that drive around, you know, boom, boom, you know what I'm saying? So I think, you know, you got that and that, and you put it all together, and, you know, sometimes a group that comes out of L.A. will, like, say, man, I don't really like them, but their music's good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, see, uh, the, the whole difference w between the funk and what goes on on the East Coast was that in, on the East Coast, it was always up into up-tempo type rhythms because of the breakdancing thing, you know? Yeah. It was straight hip-hop. And on the West Coast, we were more into popping before we got into breaking. And see, funk was like the main music for popping because it was real slow, it had hard bass, and, and the, the kicks were, the, 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 the snares were, were, were good for like the movements of, of what we were doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I guess that's, that's what influenced us for the funk side. But you know, he was a break dancer. He's from Queens. So, you know, we kind of mixed both feels. So we got, it's like this funky hip hop, but with, with some, some conscious, real, concept lyrics to it you know not just something that's making people think damn those guys are ignorant they don't know what they're talking about give it something you can't understand well it's gonna be a long time before i ride finish one of the many misses that i have to establish the light must flip ignite and wet the sight so if you ain't down yeah so try to get you for your eye to what you call the one time to play the role model no something you can't understand. <laughs> was it, did you get a lot of flack when you were first starting up? Because everybody didn't, it was like, wow, that's different. No, the name no, style? It, either you, you liked it or you didn't. Yeah. And that's how we said, well, we'll take it like how they take it, you know? It's because, you know, if when I, when I rap, I rap, you know, it, it comes out as, as like that because when I get loud, you know? And I could only sound like that if I'm getting loud. If I'm talking low like this, I sound like this. So I try to speak low as possible so I don't get anybody annoyed like, shut up. I always thought I'll it was on the cutting that. edge. 
you know, his voice. I always thought it was like the next step of rap. I think I always thought like nobody's doing this. And we come out with this guy's voice like that. And then the other background vocals and the slamming music. I, I always thought it was like, I thought we were kind of like a step ahead of people. But at the, and, and we were like a step behind because nobody knew about us. Yeah, you know? people called my house. B there? Yeah, this is B. No, it ain't. Well, you know, well, people that don't, you know, they call for the yeah. first time. Mm -hmm. Nah, this ain't B. <laughs> I said, yeah, it's me, man. Ain't nobody else here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's kind of cool because then I could always say wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> you know? La, 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 la. I'm doing just what I want to do, but without anybody telling me what to do or how to do it. So I'm my own journalist, I'm my own editor, I'm my own newspaper, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? And these are the, these are the, you know, Instead chairman of, paper, of the board beats, here. You know, see, you speak his words over some beats. See, the, the decisions are made by us three, you know, and we all pretty much feel that whatever we say is, is what has to be said, you know, however we feel. That's what we put down, so nobody nobody censors us or, or says what we can't do. <coughs> you know? So I'm I'm pretty much happy. I'd rather be doing this than having some old fat ass man, <laughs> you know, telling me, hey, you can't write this because it's this and this and that. No, I, I can write it, so I'm happy. Before we even came out with that album, we had already ideas and stuff that we wanted to accomplish, and that was one of them. Another one was being on the cover of High Times magazine and stuff like that. And, you know, it's part of our strategy. We, we like to pre-plan what we do, and that was something that we wanted to do. And, uh, on on that were... particular subject, anyway, you know, we, we always thought, well, they could help us mm -hmm. in giving us the information we need to know. And at the same time, we could make them stronger by educating our audience what they're teaching us. So that, that was like, that was one of the only plans we really had, because we do everything on the field. But that, we always thought, what like, now, if we do that, we'll, we'll be, you know, we'll be in there. And, um, what are some of the points that, um, that normal is trying to educate people about? Well, they're, they're chopping down rainforests at the speed of light. You know, you could grow cannabis hemp at, you know, at one, not even one third of the process that it takes to grow a rainforest. It takes, you know, like 30, 40 years to grow them trees. You know, hemp could grow, you could grow at 30 one feet season. high in six months. Chop one it down season. and use the fibers for papers. For the same junk mail they deliver to your house, you turn around and throw out. You know what I'm saying? Newspapers and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, see, it's, it's, it's a bigger thing than, than smoking. See, that's what the politicians and everybody tries to counter with, oh, you know, right away. If, if we legalize it, there's going to be a bigger drug problem. How could there be a bigger drug problem? It's not a drug. You know what I'm saying? They prescribe uppers and downers every day to people. Every day. And it's legal. You got to realize that a government that's made of six, seven hundred people are going to try to tell three, four, five million what to do, who to follow. You got to have some kind of say so for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Say, no, well, I think this is good and this. And if you say this, I'd rather have my kid ask me, you know, Pop, these guys from Cypress Hill, you know, they're talking about weed, you know, tell me about it. You know what I'm saying? And instead of the kid going out and reading some newspaper about Cypress Hill, you know, which all he's doing is pointing a finger. A lot of times you don't get to do interviews like this where you can speak your mind. Mm -hmm. you know? do, you, do you guys see yourselves as role models? No. No? No, I just see us as some popular guys. Mm -hmm. I'm not no role model. I never have. I'll tell you right now, I used to be in a gang. I went to jail a gang of times. What's that? What kind of role model is that? And just because I'm, you know, I'm doing music now and we're good at it, that shouldn't make me a role model. It should make Ice Cube a role model. You know what I'm saying? They make us to be the role model. When, when the parents can't do it and when everybody else can't do it, they look at us mm -hmm. for the mistakes that their kids make. And they say, well, they got it from them. You know? You know, and it ain't us because mm -hmm. it starts at the home before yeah. anywhere else. I it's mean, dark. music influences people only to a point. Know what I'm saying? What a person does, that that's strictly, it starts from the home or from influences out on the street. 
You know, they, they, put, they put all that on us. That ain't right, because I'll tell you what, when I grew up, I was not influenced of, of my wrongdoings from music. It was the people around me and in, in, in the environment. So when you point the finger at us, it just makes, it makes you look ignorant. Thanks for joining us for the Cypress Hill, y'all. As we attempt to rock Canada. Woo! We speak for people. We don't, you know, we don't try to tell them what they should or shouldn't do because nobody wants to be preached to. You know, we just we speak tell you what for we them. do. How things go on where we stay and people can relate because it's happening just about everywhere. Mm -hmm. Same thing, kids going through it, we going through it, you know. See, we're like, we're like their voice, you know. I mean, because I know somebody preaches to me, I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. But if they're telling me in a manner where like, yo, I've been what you've been through, man, you know. It's, it's, what we do is music to make people think about what, what, what they're actually doing.